welcome to Friday Night Chats with Garage Geek. So this week has been very hot in Los Angeles. It's steadily, the temperature rose. And so we've been facing these really short electricity cutoffs. I mean, they last like 10 seconds, but they're just enough to be annoying where if you're watching something, it has to, you know, reset. And, and I know I shouldn't complain about that. I mean, a few seconds of power outage is nothing. Like I lived in Malawi in Africa and it was natural for the power to just be off for two days. People just didn't question it. And I remember one time when the power was out for a week. So I really should not complain about that, right? But I mean, it's, it's just what's happening right now because everyone's using their air conditioners or, or whatnot at the same time. Uh, I am very happy because I'm off work for four days. So that's, that's really nice. So as you know, um, I'm a teacher. And so I'm getting Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off for Labor Day weekend. Pretty cool. Um, so instead of coffee today, I have Gatorade because it's been so hot. So I have a project for this weekend. So I'm still going through my albums and I'm like 85% done, I think one more day. And then after that, I've got some fine tuning to do in my room because my original goal was whenever I made albums, I would face this direction and whenever I made comic book videos, I would face the other direction because on the other side you could see, you know, a backdrop of all my comics. So I'm looking forward to being able to change the, the view of the camera so that you don't have to see the same thing every time. I would also like to have a different angle because I don't particularly like making you see, you know, my TV, my stereo in the background. I prefer you to see more of the albums. So that's what I'm working on. Um, what did I watch this week? I didn't watch too much, right? The first thing I watched um, under duress was the Netflix movie Me Time. It's a comedy. I'm not a huge uh, comedy movie fan. I, I watch them um, when I need to. And um, this week, yeah, I, I think it was like last Friday or Saturday, I watched Me Time, which stars Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg. And you know, it's a typical comedy. It's, it's just not my thing. I did laugh in a few parts. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but for, many, for me, like many times, you know, the decisions they make and the reasons that they do things just seem like laughable, but not in a, you know, a way that's supposed to s support the comedy of the movie. Um, I just find the situations silly. And so I, again, I'm not a big comedy fan, um, but I, like I said, it, it wasn't a total waste of time. And if you like comedies, um, buddy movies, like this is a buddy movie, then you'll, uh, I, I think you'd like it. Um, there was one interesting thing, thing though. Um, Mark Wahlberg um, is really buff at the beginning of the movie. In fact, he's naked for, um, I don't know, a good, good chunk, a, a big scene. And I looked online um, and it said that he, ha he, that was his first day of shooting and I think he had to be naked for 12 hours. This is pretty funny. But then there's a scene later in the movie where they're on a boat. If you, if you watch the movie, you'll notice he's um, very emaciated. It's like the, the change is drastic. And I was kind of concerned, so I went online and I think what's going on is that he is filming a boxing movie and he had to uh, lose a lot of weight. In fact, I mean, I hope that's what it is. I mean, uh, I certainly like uh, Mark Wahlberg and his uh, movies and I've, you know, followed his career. I mean, he's not my favorite actor, but I certainly uh, like him and I, I, you know, I hope he's, he's okay. Um, I also watched the first episode of House of House of Dragons, uh, House of the Dragon on HBO. Um, I read all the uh, the books for um, uh, Game of Thrones, and I, you know, of course, I saw the show. So I I would say that I'm a pretty big fan. And so I started watching this show, and I was surprised at how much I liked it. It was it was actually really really good. I was immediately drawn in. Um, so don't worry, I'm not going to give any spo spoilers for anything that I talk about. Um, but what, what's because I, I watch things without knowing much. I do that on purpose. And 
when I started watching it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's Matt Smith, you know, one of the Doctor Who's. And at first, it, it, his makeup and his hairstyle are like a little bit hard to get used to. But he's so good in the role, you kind of forget it. Like, he looks like, he really looks like uh, an extra from, sorry, when a warning light came out of my uh, phone. He really looks like an extra from uh, Lord of the Rings. And you'll know, he looks like one of the L's, like, like less. And so, I mean, it was hard to get beyond that, but he's very good in it. So I'm looking forward to seeing where his character is going to go. Right now, he's like a Jamie Lannister clone. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm really interested to see where his character goes and how they develop him. So I recommend it. I'm going to hopefully watch the second one uh, tonight. I mean, I also watched uh, Bill Maher uh, this week and they had um, uh, on the show, they had John Waters. And so he's promoting the 50th anniversary of, what was it? Um, female Trouble or no, not Female Trouble. Uh, the poop one. <laughs> Pink Flamingos. Okay, so it's the 50th anniversary, and I recently bought both of those on uh, Criterion. So, anyways, he was very funny, as always. So, if you want, just watch. If you don't like Bill Maher, you could just, you know, Google that clip and, and watch his interview with um, John Waters. It was really a lot of fun. I actually did a lot of videos this week for YouTube. I counted two, four. I did about at least eight videos, and my numbers actually did go up. I'm at 169. I, was, I think I was at 160 last week. I was actually at 164 and then I dropped to 160. And um, I mean, like, that's not the direction I want to go. But now I'm back up to 169. And so I've been doing YouTube for a solid two months. And I know for some people it takes a year, but I'm like, I want, I want, you know, I want, obviously I want to, I want to make that growth go fast so I'm making a lot of videos a lot of content uh, I, so I'm kind of realistically looking at hopefully a hundred subscribers per month and I'm at 169 so that would be around September 4th would be my two month mark so I'm hoping but I mean that's like 30 I don't know that's not gonna happen 30 30 more subscribers in two days yet yeah, no that's not gonna happen um what else have I been doing so I did not read very much this week at all uh, I guess I'm still getting used to my teaching schedule and and we also had back to school night this week wasn't it no that was last week sorry so maybe I'm just still getting used to the schedule I'm reading these two comics like I mentioned last week but I didn't make any progress I'm also reading uh, a book on the ticket trees book the flame Flame Trees of Tikka. Yeah, something like that. And I read one chapter. Its chapter was excellent. It's an excellent book. So I can't wait to um, finish that so I could talk more about it in depth in a video. What have I been listening to? Uh, I've been listening to these three CDs this week. So I've been listening to uh, Victoria Will Williams' Musing of, Musings of a Creek Dipper. Now this... CD is really strange because she does a lot of voice affectations kind of like Tom Waits but she doesn't it's not as extreme as later Tom Waits it's it's more like earlier Tom Waits so uh, like I said this is a it's a kind of a strange CD and I actually want to research it a little bit because I'm wondering if she's trying to make the voices fit the characters of the songs and I usually listen to these songs while I'm reading or doing something in the background and so I need to actually pay a little bit more attention maybe I'll do that this week I was also I also um, pulled out this CD uh, by Anara George so I don't know if you know her but she lives in LA I've seen her live a few times she's been in um, or she is part of the Living Sisters and also the Bird and the Bee. And she's the daughter of Lowell George, right, from Little Feet. And she also has a very, very pretty voice, but she's 
again, when she's doing her solo stuff, she's doing things that are kind of interesting or different with her voice. Because when she's in Bird and the Bee, she sings with a very, very sweet tone. And it's, it's very nice. And here, like I said, she's trying to do experimental things with her voice. And I do appreciate it. The final one that I've been listening to, oh, it's right here, is this amazing two CD set of Natalie Merchant and it's called Leave Your Sleep. So it's basically children's lullabies that she sings. And it comes with this amazing book. And each, each song, like the book goes through where she got the songs and it has the lyrics and um, this is actually like a research project in itself because she did so much work to put this album together, just picking the material and then I think she just picked like poems and so she then had to create the music to go with the poetry. Um, it's fascinating and um, I'm definitely going to start researching uh, this more and I'm going to make a video about it but I bet that one will take me a lot of research and a lot of time. So I was supposed to make a video about these two comparing the vinyl um, of this CD and then also uh, talking about this in respect to Dusty Springfield. I just, I didn't get around to those two. And I did, the only shopping I did this week was I stopped at uh, a local, very local record store. It's like right around the store from my house, but it's new, it's called Maritime Records. Now, when I go in there, the prices are a little bit higher than I normally pay, but, but I go in there knowing that and I, I'm, I'm fine with it because uh, it's such a new and small record store that I, I wholeheartedly want to support them. And so I stop in there every so often. And it was bad though, because the, the blackouts were happening on the way home. And so I went in, immediately when I went in, the power went out. And so there was no AC and I was going through, you know, that store and I was just feeling like the sweat. And I, I, I stuck it out though. And I, I went through almost everything, but there was one big section of jazz that I started the first two. And I was just like, no, I can't, I gotta go. It was really hot in there. Even with the doors, you know, wide open, cause it was, it's an elongated rectangle. And so air wasn't moving through it at all. Uh, so, hey, it's the blackouts, right? Rolling blackouts. And they only last, like I said, for about 30 seconds at the most, but the AC wasn't coming back on. I think maybe they don't have AC, they were using fans, maybe. But anyways, I bought uh, to I think four albums and so I'm going to talk about them so the most expensive one I bought was Yes this was $10 and I, I don't have this one and I wanted it because of the cover it's, it's such a simple cover but it's iconic and the way that the color changes is really interesting but more importantly it's for the gatefold so that art Obviously, I hope you could see that. I was, yeah, the, that art. Okay, so I wanted that. That's the, uh, uh-oh. Such a famous artist. He does so many Yes albums. And his name is escaping me right now. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's not going to come to me. But uh, just like so many other people, I'm trying to collect his art as much as possible. And Yes is a good place to start because he uh, did so much art for this group. So I was very happy to get that. I mean, it, it's used, but it was it's a very nice copy. It's not quite mint. There's a little bit of, you know, a little bit like you can see there's a spine to here. But you know, I, it's okay. It's, an, it's, it's a very pretty copy for display. And of course, uh, I also want to say that since I bought them yesterday, I listened to all of these albums and um, I'll, I'll talk about them right now, but there's only one that I would do a review on. Okay, the next one I, I bought, again, for the cover, was this Free Flight. And this says that it is a jazz classical union. So I knew exactly what I was buying when I got this. So basically jazz, new age, classical. And that's exactly what it was. And then when, I mean, you can see the, the band picture on the back and the, the best one is, oh no. It's not there, but there's some more here when you look. 
inside. So it's basically kind of jazzed up, but like, I mean, like there's flute. It sounds, even though it's supposedly jazz, it's really new age, new age versions of classical songs. And I really enjoyed it. I listened to it twice. I'll keep listening to it. It is nice to listen to when, when, read, when I'm reading. And, and that cover is really nice. But I wouldn't recommend it. Right? I wouldn't recommend anybody searching it out. If you can get it for a couple bucks and you like New Age classical, then definitely. So the next one I got was called um, Mark. It's by Mark Egan. And it's... It's called Mosaic. Now, uh, I mean, that, that, I, that, the reason, blah, like, I wish I could cut that out, but I'm not cutting these uh, Friday night videos. So that cover is stunning. Look at that. It's, and it's mint. And I think I paid $4 for this. And, and I even felt that I paid too much. This should have been like uh, $2, right? So, there is the musician, and I mean, the, whole, the best thing I could say is that he looks really happy there. Um, this is certainly a nice album. Again, it's New Age. I bought it for the cover, and he, here's the inside of it. And this is weird because the back has, to, it's just blank. And then you have all of this here. And I listen to it, of course. I listen to it a couple times. Um, it is very nice to play in the background, but this is definitely New Age. Nothing wrong with New Age, right? I like New Age, but you really have to like New Age. So, again, would I recommend that to most people? No, I wouldn't. But that cover is stunning. You cannot argue that. That is a beautiful piece of art. Okay, and the last one is the one that I will, I will do a record uh, overview of. And that one is Billy Thorpe's East of Eden's Gate. And so when I started this, I immediately got this this new age vibe, just the instrumentation, everything. But later it turns into to a kind of rock and album. And at first I didn't like it, but by the time I got to side two, I think side two is actually better. I was really starting to enjoy this. So I gave it I think at least three listens and I started to like it more and more and so this this one I would recommend for certain people and I will go over it in the video when I make it but I mean look at that cover there there's his face and the feet and then I mean what looks like you know mountainscapes and again that's a very very pretty piece of art did I show them at all because there he is I mean he's rocking look at him go well there there we got more like the lyrics. But anyways, this one, this album is fun, and I and I was happy to get it for I think four bucks. All right, so I had said no. What I'm going to do this week for YouTube, like I started something new. I was trying clips, so I did an Olivia Newton-John clips because I'm still like celebrating the life of Olivia Newton-John. I'm not done. I still have a few albums to review. In fact. To be reviewed is uh, physical by Olivia Newton-John. Now, one of my friends is like, maybe everyone's getting sick of Olivia Newton-John. Sorry, but I do want to continue um, going through her her um, her albums and and uh, just you know her overall uh, output in general. I for me, it's a it's it's a way to pay tribute and also to learn more about her. Um, and I know. It, I, time is going by but for me it's still a journey to that's my dog he's a... he's been doing that all day today i don't know why so he <laughs> angel so there's nothing really wrong with him he needs to get some water or something no he's probably got something stuck in his throat and he's trying to get out okay so sorry about that you had to hear that so also this week I'm going to try to do an overview of this album by David Blue. I've been listening to it and it's pretty interesting. And so I want to kind of, I don't know who he is, so I want to start, you know, delving in and doing some research and finding out more about him. Uh, yeah, there's an there's an inside the back. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be doing a vinyl 
uh, exploration of that. Um, and then I, I pulled this one out. So Donna Fargo, Fargo Country. Um, when I was young, I had the, the single of I'm the happiest girl in the whole USA. <laughs> I know, I think dancing to that is probably what made me gay. So thank you, Donna. It's all your fault. But anyways, this, this out, I mean, look how pretty that is. Um, she's a country girl. So, and then look at those short shorts. So I'm gonna do an overview of this album. And one of the reasons I grabbed it is it's got um, a cover of a Harry Chapin song. I'm a huge Harry Chapin fan. Um, and she also writes some of them. And so I kind of want to go through, go through this. Um, and then uh, I'll, I will say though, that when I first put it on, I, I had, a, I had a, like a gut reaction of like, Ugh, it wasn't good. So I'm gonna, you know, obviously keep listening to it. And then I, the videos that I post of older albums, they are doing well. But I'm still going to do them because for me, it's it's kind of research and that's what I love. I really, really love older albums. And so, and there you get them so cheap. So I think I'm going to do this one this week. So this is um, My Baby Loves to Swing by Vic Damone. And I'm sure he's a vocalist. I don't think he writes anything. So you know, I'll be doing the typical thing where I go through each song and where they came from and and how he interprets the songs, etc. So if you're a huge fan of my channel, that's what you have to look forward to when it comes to vinyl. I'm also going to continue um, trying to incorporate comics into uh, my vinyl. And so that's a work in progress. I, I really want to involve be involved more with the comic community, the way that the vinyl community does, the way the vinyl community supports each other, like I, I've said this before, and the way they throw out threads and contests for people to jump on, and it gets a, gives us a chance to know each other and have this back and forth, whereas the comic community doesn't really do that, and it's it's it actually saddens me a little bit because, like I've said before, uh, I actually last lost subscribers because of this, you know, it's all—it's always about FOMO. It's—it's it's not about celebrating what we have. It's always about like, oh, I gotta get these comics because they're gonna be expensive, and I gotta get them now before they become expensive. And and I mean, it's the same thing, honestly, in the vinyl community. Because you know, when I show something, I say, hey, this is really good. You know, we want to go out and get it, right? But I try to focus on things that you could find really, really cheaply. And um, I, I do the same with my comics. Like, I'm not running out to grab those keys. I get comics for the cover so that I could display them. So um, I t even though it sounds a little hypocritical, I try to do it in a hypocritical light fashion. Um, so anyways, yeah, I went through I went through my recordings, my CDs, my books, my comics. Um, I think that's all for this week. Let me go ahead and take a drink before we go. I really, really tried to keep this one under uh, 30 minutes and I, I succeeded. It's only 23 minutes so far. Because the last one was 45 and when I looked at the analytics, most people watch, 50% of the people dropped off after a minute and then the other 50% would, they were like dropping after five minutes, I think. So I don't, know if this is going to be successful or or um or pan pan out or i'm going to be able to pull this off but hey you know it's just hey this is what happened this week this is where i'm going i hope you're along for the ride if you know if you're interested then you know if you want to hear my my dog uh you know coughing up a hairball then then i hope you're along for the ride so anyways um please uh don't forget to like, subscribe, no, uh, hit the notification bell, and then please watch some of the other videos uh, that I've made and share the news that a Garage Geek is out there and he only has 169 subscribers, but he needs 1 million. <laughs>